subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello and you're welcome once again to your Joy Learning channel. This is SHS Hour with me, Dennis Amoba. As you know, whenever we meet like this, then we have English, SHS English. Today we're looking at something interesting, something that is exciting, something that we do unconsciously, but as part of our learning at SHS, we try to find out why we speak the way we do. So we're doing listening and speaking, and our topic for today is intonation. Intonation. What is it? We say that there is something we call intonation. You have tune one and tune two. What is intonation? We'll be finding out that is what we are doing today. And as you know, any time that we are together here, SHS1, then it means that we have to have some targets, we have to have some goals, we have objectives that we would like to achieve. So at the end of this interaction, at the end of this experience, we'll be able to explain what intonation is. What is intonation? We will try to understand what it is, we also try to identify the ordinary functions of falling and rising intonation. Does that give you a clue that there can be something called falling or rising intonation? What it is. So we'll be looking at that. Then we will use falling and rising intonation to express different functions. We're going to use that to express different functions. So we will know what intonation is, identify the ordinary functions of falling and rising intonation, use falling and rising intonation to express different functions. What it means is that intonation is used to express different functions. It has implications. What is intonation? So let's look at these sentences that I'm going to provide and I would expect you to read them and then we will find out. So please take your time and read them because after reading, there are two sets, there are two groups of sentences that I'm going to give you. When we are done, I will ask you some questions and then that will help us to understand what we are about doing. I always think that there are things you know already and of course, those are the things we will use to explain a new concept. So let's look at this. We love joy learning. We love joy learning. Who has done the assignment? Where did Abu go last night? A queer reads fluently. Listen to these sentences again. We love joy learning. Who has done the assignment? Where did Abu go last night? A queer reads fluently. Do you notice something? Okay, the first sentence, see a full stop, so that is a statement, we remember that. A declarative sentence, subject, our verb is love, and so our subject is we. This is a declarative, subject, verb. And then who has done the assignment? Thus, of course, with the question mark, means it's an interrogative sentence. Where you have the main verb, or the operator exchanging position with the, the, the beach word. So you have who has done the assignment. So don't you forget that. Then we have, this means it's an interrogative sentence. Where did Abu go last night? Where, 
also an integrative sentence, did Abu go? Okay, and then there's a question mark, so there's also a question. If here reads fluently, there's a full stop, there's a verb, there's a subject, they agree, this is a declarative sentence. Okay, so we have declarative sentences and then we have interrogative sentences. But when we read, what do we observe? I love joy learning. Who has done the assignment? Where did Abu go last night? Akira reads fluently. Now, let's go to our next set of sentences and then you tell me something. May I go out? Has she done the assignment? Does he know your house? Can you please help me to my car? All of these are questions because they also have question marks. But do you see the difference between these questions and the first questions? Where did Abu go last night? As opposed to may I go out? Has she done the assignment? Does he know your house? Can you please tell, take, can you please help me to my car? We love joy learning. That was the first one. If you remember, we love joy learning. Let me take you there quickly. We saw these sentences. We love joy learning. Who has done the assignment? There's a question mark, all right. I suppose, may I know your name? May I go out? Can you please take me to my car? Do you notice some changes in the voice? We love joy learning. Who has done the assignment? Where did Abu go last night? Akira reads fluently. And then these examples. May I go out? Has she done the assignment? Does he know your house? And then the last one here, can you help me to my car? Are there some changes? D do you notice some changes in the voice as we speak? If you didn't, let's look at these examples also. So listen to these ones and let's see whether we can get them right. What's your name? There's a question mark. What's your name? And then we compare it to this one. Does she know your name? Do you see the difference in voice? What's your name? Does she know your name? Can we say that this sentence, when we are ending, which is a question, we, our voice come down. Does she, what is your name? What is your name? Does she know your name? Have you seen the difference? So name, and then what's your name? Even though they are all questions, one has our voice coming down and the other our voice rising. Do we notice that? What's your name? Does she know your name? Let's look at the other one. May I go out? We've been saying this as children when we were basic school, we always would go to our teachers and say, Please, madam, may I go out? So out, that's up, right? It rises. And then let's look at the last one. Who is this lady? Who is this lady? So that also comes down. So let's look at, what's your name? Does she know your name? May I go out? Who is this lady? Do you notice the difference? So in some cases when we are talking, our voice falls. And in other cases, our voice rises. Okay? This is what we are talking about. The rise or the fall of the voice, especially when we are speaking, when we are speaking, the way our voice rises or falls, is what we are talking about today. 
So if you notice the in the first sentence, what's your name? Your voice is down, even though you are asking questions. So the WH word here, okay. WH questions, when we are asking if you can see, our voices go down. But when we're using the auxiliary, which can be a yes and no question, then our voice rises. Have you seen that? The falling or the rising of the voice when we are speaking, as this may especially, especially affect meaning, is what we are looking at today. That is what we call intonation. So what is intonation? Intonation, they say it's the sound changes produced. So there are changes in the sound that we are producing by the rise and fall of voice when speaking. So as I'm speaking, I say, good morning. You see, my voice is up, means I'm lively. Those are some of the implications. When your voice rises, it's not like you're shouting, okay, rising of the voice. Good morning. How are you? Basically, you say, how are you? But why would you say, how are you? And especially news presenters, when they come say, good morning, and say, good morning, rising. And when they are done, sometimes you hear, and this is where we bring down the curtain on today's edition of the news, good morning, like they are done. So the rise or fall of the voice can have implications. So the other definition from the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary is that intonation is the rise and fall of voice in speaking, especially as this affects the meaning of what is being said. So somebody says, good morning, good morning, everyone, good morning, good morning. If the person is lively, the rising of affects the meaning of what the person is saying. But in the morning, somebody comes to the office and say, good morning, in their class, good morning. You, you might see that something is wrong. You don't have to go there because the person might not be in the mood to want to talk. So it say that intonation is the rise, okay, the rise and fall of voice in speaking. So here we'll be speaking. That's why we're doing listening and speaking. In speaking, especially as this affects, this rise and fall of the voice in speaking, especially affects, okay? Affects the meaning of what is being said. So let's see whether we'll be able to notice these again. I think I have a few sentences. So now we, we listen to and repeat the following. You are learning English language. Just say that. Good. You are learning, you are learning English language. It's rising or falling. Good, it's falling. You are learning English language. So the last word is usually stressed and your voice False. You are learning English language. Let's look at this one. Shut the door. Shut the door. Good. Falling. So when you see the arrow there, it means that our voice falls. Shut the door. Let's look at another. Will your mother visit you today? Say that. Good. Is it rising or falling? It's rising. Good. Will your mother visit you today? Today? Shut the door. You are learning English language. Falling. Let's look at this one. The students are making a lot of noise. The students are making a lot of noise. Falling. Then we have, are we all safe? 
Are we all safe? What is it? Good rising. Okay, so you notice that when you have Will your mother visit you today? Rising, it requires a yes or no answer. So yes or no questions or questions that require yes or no or yes and no are, are, are asked using the rising intonation. Have you noticed that? And if you say, will your mother visit you today? What function are you using this one to accomplish? What, what different meaning do you get? Of course, you are not sure, you are doubtful, you, you do not know whether it is certain that the message you want to find out, will your mother visit you today? You don't know. If you said your mother will visit you today, then you are certain. Okay, so the rising or the falling of the voice in speech can affect the meaning of what is being said according to the definition. Good, let's look at these ones. So what are the uses of falling intonation? So we use falling intonation in statements, as we said. We are learning English. It's a statement and it's falling. Kofi is here. I'm giving you information. And this is a declarative. We are learning English. This is Kofi is here. When I say that, what is the implication? I am certain. I know for a fact that Kofi is here. So I am certain. Falling. Right? Then we can have this. In commands, sit down, as we notice, shut the door. When you use that, falling, you are giving commands. So in commands, we use falling intonation. Okay? Sit down. Wait for me in the room. Falling intonation. Let's look at this. So, and in WH questions, you remember? Who is your friend? Maybe who is and I have my question. Falling. Who is your friend? Okay. So falling intonation is using statement or what we call declaratives and then commands. So when I'm making a statement, I say Kofi is here. Or oh, I saw him yesterday. See me tomorrow. Come in. Sit down. Write your name. Those are falling. Then in WH questions, the WH words could be what, where. Where did you see him? When did they come? What did you eat? What are you saying? Falling. Good. So who is there? We have who is there. I wrote who is your friend. So you can put this one here. Who is there? Down. Okay. Can we say who is there? Okay, if that happened, then it will give us a different function. Even though ordinarily we know it should be down, if someone said who is there? What would that mean? Good. You said that the person is not sure. They, they're trying to find out. They are not certain whether somebody's there. So rising intonation tells us that somebody is in doubt. But we're looking at falling intonation. They are used in statement. Statements are structures that are used to give information. You declare something. I saw him. I know where he lives. They are doing their best. And then sit down. Come in. Write your name. Eat the food, drink the water. They are all commands. Falling into the nation. And then we look at this in exclamation. How funny. You're down. Okay? How funny. How disgusting. Okay? Falling. 
So we know when we making statement, our voices will be down. Those are the ordinary ways of using the intonation. When you're talking, your voice comes down. Sit down. See me tomorrow. If someone says that, sit down, it also has some implication, right? So when it's falling, depending on the situation, even though it's a command, when someone commands, it means that they have control over you. Then it means it also shows assertiveness. The person has power over you. And then who is there? They ask you a question. That's the normal way to ask it. But somebody says, who is there? They are doubtful. Could also mean that they are being, we will look at that. They are being polite. So we come to rising intonation. So yes and no questions. When you are asking yes and no questions, you just use rising intonation. So what do we have here? Are you happy? Rising. Are you happy? Ordinarily, if you are asking any yes or no question, that's what you say. You can say, did you see the box? Did you see the box? Rising. Right? And then we have Rising intonation, it is used to express statement of doubt. So when you doubt something, this is critical because you meet it somewhere when you are informed. See, I think that the oral English text 7 is more to do with intonation. So when somebody uses a statement that we know must ordinarily go with a falling intonation and they use a rising intonation to say that, then it means that they are not sure, they are doubtful, they are not certain, they are uncertain. So let's look at that. Say, rising intonation is used to express statements of doubt. Let's see whether we have examples. Kofi is here. If it is a statement, ordinarily it should have been Kofi is here. So if somebody says Kofi is here, it could mean that I thought he had left. Okay, that means the person doubts what you're saying, whether what you're saying is true. They are not certain. They don't want to. It could also be used to express surprise. Kofi is here. Kofi is in the room. Doubt. They doubt it. They won't want to see Kofi there. So rising intonation is used to express statements of doubt or uncertainty. Okay. Let's see whether we have another example. Janice came last night. Ordinarily, this is a statement. Janice came last night. Okay? Janice came last night. I should come. When it should be, I should. I should come. Then you, I should come. You, you are doubtful. You don't know. You are not certain. I should come. Kofi is here. Rising intonation. Janice came last night. So don't you forget, ordinarily, rising intonation is used in yes and no questions. Where you say, can you help me? Either you say, yes, I can, or no, I cannot. Did you see the man? Either you say, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Have you done the work? You just say, yes, I have, or no, I haven't. Okay, that's where we use rising intonation, ordinary state. But when it comes to the other use of the rising intonation, say that you can use it, as we said in our objective, we want to look at the different functions of rising intonation. When you have a statement and you say, Kofi is here, it means that you are certain. Kofi is here, falling intonation. But if you go like, Kofi is here, it means that you are doubtful, you are uncertain, you are unsure. It will come somewhere in future. Janice came last night. Basic, Janice came last night. If you said that, it meant that you are, you are certain, you are sure. Okay? So those are the things. And then we have this. I should come home. I mean, I should come home. But if you say, I should come home, you are doubtful, you're not sure. 
you are not certain. Do we get that? So get the two. Fallen intonation ordinarily are used in statement or used when you are asking questions that start with WH words. So what's your name? When did you come? Why did you do that? Okay, you make statement. I know the place. He's my friend. Or falling. Then, then when we come to rising, they are in yes and no questions. What they call polar questions. Okay, so does she know your name? Can she do the work? You may I go out? Yes or no? Okay, but in that you might also in the class or wherever be making a polite request. So rising intonation is also using polite requests when you're making a polite request. Okay, but it's a question as it were, polar question. It should either be yes or no. So that will be the other implication of using the rising intonation. When we want to make polite requests, when we want to be polite, we use rising intonation. So you can just go to your headmaster and say, what's your name? Even though that is the ordinary way to say it, what's your name? What's your name? Falling intonation. But because you want to be decorous, okay, you want to be circumspect as far as asking your headmaster questions as concerned, so you will say, what's your name, sir? Where were you born? All of that shows respect. So that could be the other use of the rising intonation. It is used to show politeness, to make polite requests. May I go out? Could I make a call with your phone? Could I call my mother? Could I come home next week? Week? Okay, by statement. When you're expressing doubt, Kofi's in the room, certain. Kofi's in the room, rising, means that you are not sure. You are doubtful. You are certain. So these are the implications, and you have to get them when you're in Form 1 because it is a component of the oral English listening comprehension, Text 7. And this will help you if you get a better understanding. A man and a woman will be speaking, and you have to listen to them in that conversation, okay? To be able to identify who used the rising intonation and what is the implication and who used the falling intonation or whether both use the rising intonation or both use the falling intonation. What do both mean, okay? What are the implications? And that's what we are saying. Rising ordinarily for asking yes and no questions, but they are also used to ask polite questions. Rising, when it is a statement, then you are expressing a statement of doubt. You're expressing doubt. So let's look at these examples as we said. Kofi is here. Rising. Janice came last night. I shall come. When it should be, should I come? Ordinarily. But I shall come. Yes, you are doubtful. You are not sure whether you should come. Let's go to the next one where we have this one, you have two people speaking. It's a short dialogue, and Dede and Menu are speaking. So Dede goes like, you said the speech was well delivered, and Menu said, that's what she said. Okay, that's what she said. If you say that's what she said, then Menu will be certain, and if Dede said the speech was you said the speech was well delivered. Then they are all certain. But you see that you said the speech was well delivered, rising, delivered. And then man who says, that's what she said, then both are doubtful. That is the implication. Both are doubtful as to whether the speech was well delivered. So you could have a conversation like this in text seven, and then they will ask you, Maybe the day is certain, menu is not. Menu is certain, the day is not. Or both are certain or both are doubtful. In this situation, what is our answer? 
great both are uncertain or both are unsure or both are doubtful because they all use their rising intonation. Statements that should have had fallen intonation now have rising intonation. That means they are doubtful. I hope that is clear. Good. Let's look at this. Whether we are following. We are saying that rising intonation could also be used to express sarcasm. You know, when you're sarcastic, you, you try to ridicule people. You are sharp in the way you say things. Okay, so let's look at this, if that works. Um, we have a conversation between Ali and Jani. And Ali <coughs> says this, I am a good person. I am a good person. As we can see, that's a statement. So ordinarily, we have our fallen intonation sign. I'm a good person. And Jani goes like, you are? Whoa, you are? Yes, you are. We see, Jani is being sarcastic. Oh, she's expressing, she's ridiculing. Abu Ali, Ali rather, Ali saying, I'm a good person. Ali thinks that he's a good person. And Jani said, you are? So in this situation, what would we say? Good. Ali is certain, Jani is not. However, Jani is being sarcastic. She is saying, mm -mm, I didn't know this. You are telling me. Without just saying, you are? Okay, you are. We, okay. So rising intonation could show doubt, but it could also show that people are sarcastic. Right. I'm a good person. You are? Sarcasm. So rising intonation, that is the other. Don't you forget. We also say that rising intonation is used to express surprise. Surprise. When you are surprised at something, you can also use rising intonation. So let's look at this example. We have Mary left home. Okay, I'm shocked. That's what I'm saying. Are you sure that Mary left home? It's a statement. So it should be Mary left home. I think this one should be Mary left home. Then we use this one to show. Mary left home. And we say, are you sure? Okay. So this one is used to express surprise. And then you spoke to my mother. Whoa. Okay. Yes, you spoke to my mother. And then the person goes like, you spoke to my mother. Mother means the person is surprised. So when we use rising intonation in our speech, there are different functions that we are playing with them. Don't you forget that. Mary left home, certain. But if you had it in a conversation, Mary left home, she did. Mary left home, she did. Then you say both are Doubtful, both are uncertain because they are using rising intonation, right? So rising intonation, as you have said, are used or is used, is used, rising intonation is used to express surprise, okay? My mother is hard. And if you are able to have a conversation with her, then I am surprised. That's why somebody says, you spoke to my mother, you spoke with my mother, my mother, wow, Mary left home, rising, to express her price. And you do that all the time. But this is a component of our listening and speaking, oral English, text seven. We are doing this in first year. When you meet it anywhere, you should not have any doubt in your mind to deal with it. Okay, you'll be able to answer. And when you're talking to your mind full of, what you're saying, when people use rising or falling intonation, can help you to know the mood in which they are. If you're expressing surprise at your behavior or they are certain about what you, they are saying, and you yourself, when you're talking and you're making a statement, then it means you're either doubtful or certain. I 
should see you tomorrow, right? Then you say, I should see you tomorrow. And you say, I'm doubtful. Okay? I know that place. You know that place. You know his name. A statement of fact, falling. You know his name, rising. Doubtful. I'm not certain. Good. So let's look at this. Rising intonation. How will you read this? This should be a command, right? Good. So you have weight in the car. That should have been the ordinary one. Weight in the car is like a command, a directive. But here it's rising. So you go like, wait in the car. What's the person doing? Wait in the car. The person is making a polite request. So rising intonation is used to make a polite request. Even though this ordinarily should be a command, the rising bit of it gives it a different shade. It brings a different shade of meaning. Wait in the car. Okay, I'll be with you shortly. Wait in the car. So polite request means you are polite. So rising intonation could also mean that you are polite. As I said, if you were going to ask somebody questions and what would the president or any prominent member you need to get some pieces of information from, you can say, sir, what is your name? They might not talk to you, okay? But if you say, sir, rising, I'd like to have a few, uh, uh, I would like to have a few words with you, say yes. How, how may we start this? No, rising, rising means all the people in that communicative situation are polite. So we start off with, uh, I'd like to ask your name, where you grew, you see those rising. Okay, they are used all the time in our speech, in our encounters. And today we're just looking at how it will help us to perform well as students at the SHS level and also use it wherever we find ourselves. So if you say, wait in the car, directive, straight. Wait in the car. I wait in the car. I say, please go and wait for me in the car. So wait in the car, rising, polite request. Then we have, can I take this? This is also a polite request. Can I, like, may I go out? Can I take this? I'm making a request. You don't come and say, can I take this? Some students who come to you say, can I make a call? And I say, go away from here. The phone is not for you. You have to say, can I make a call? Rising to show that you are making a polite request. In that regard, we say you are polite. Okay, so rising intonation is very, very important. You are not shouting, but the way you let your voice rise when you're speaking affects the meaning of what you're saying. And that is all we have tried to do here. Let's look at this. May I go out? Everybody knows this. May I go out? We ask that question all the time. From primary school to SHS, we still, this is a polite request. May I go out? Rise in. Or may I go out? The teacher will say, go ahead, sit down. Because of the tone, the intonation. Okay, so it's important that we take care of all of these. What we have sought to do is that at the SHS level, we have what we call rising and falling intonation in the syllabus. Tune one, tune two. Falling ordinarily are used in statements. So maybe Kwame, Kwame knows you. Okay, Kwame knows you. That is falling. Okay, but if you say Kwame knows you, like the second one,
when it goes up, that means you say you are expressing doubt. It's a statement of doubt. Okay? Otherwise, Kwame knows you. Kwame knows you. So if a man and a woman are speaking, and you say, did you say him? Yes, I did. Then you say that the man is certain, the woman is not. That's all. The one who uses the fallen intonation is certain. Kwame knows you. He's certain. And then if I came and said, Kwame knows you? I'm doubting. I'm not sure. Okay? Good. And we said that, too, in WH questions, if you said this, where did you meet him? Where did you meet him? That is a natural falling intonation. Where did you meet him? But when I am asking somebody questions, and I want them to be forthcoming with their answers, I have to be meticulous, decorous. You know, I, have to be, I have to use polite speech. So I say, where did you meet him? Okay, that shows that you are polite. And as we said, this is ordinarily a fallen intonation structure. Where did you meet him? Where did you meet him? Polite. So what we can learn here is that when we use fallen intonation, it means we are certain. Okay? So those are the two things we have to look at. Fallen intonation could mean that you are certain. Okay? So under fallen intonation, falling could mean that you are certain. Then when we go to rising in statements like Kofi is here or Kwame knows you, that means you are uncertain. You are doubtful. Okay? In another breath, we said that ordinarily if you were asking somebody a question, you would say, where did you meet him? But Looking at the status of the person, if you ask the question like that, it will seem as though you have some power over them. So because you want your answers, you go like, where did you meet him? Okay, rising intonation could also mean that you are polite. Okay, don't you forget this. In one breath, falling intonation means, sorry, 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 let me correct this quickly. <coughs> Fallen intonation means <coughs> you are certain. In one breath, we say, where did you meet him? Then we say you are not polite. Okay, so when you use that, means you are uh, Im, impolite. Okay, but when you use rising, then we say you are polite okay so here you are certain or you are sure and then you can be doubtful okay Kofi is in the room Kofi is in the room you are doubtful okay so that is what we have sought to do in this particular lesson don't you forget that when we are speaking we either make our voice go up or come down. And I said that when we do that, then there are implications to whatever that we shall be saying. So when our voice go down or up, then it means there is going to be some effect. And we have said that intonation simply means the rise and fall of voice, the rise and fall of voice in speaking, especially as this affects the meaning of what is being said. So, Kofi is in the room, certain. Kofi is in the room means you are doubtful, okay? 
And I said that two people are talking. Your mother is coming here tomorrow. She is. A man and a woman. Then the woman asks, your, mom, your mother is coming here tomorrow. It's a statement. Your mother is coming here tomorrow. But she goes like your mother is coming here tomorrow with a rising intonation. Is a person is uncertain. Then the man says she is. In that situation, you say the woman is uncertain, the man is certain. Or the woman is doubtful, the man is not. So these are the things I wanted you to know. Don't you forget it is part of the listen and speaking exercises that you'll be doing. And it is at text 7 of the oral English at you no know, the final year. In your final year, you will be preparing to take your words, the paper 3 of the English language. And as part of that, you have text 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, the text 7, has to do with intonation. This is the very beginning of it. I hope that you have learned something and you are going to continue so that when you are giving two statements by a man and a woman, like we had in Ali and Jani, where Ali said, I am a good person, and Jani said, you are, then we will notice that Ali is certain, but Jani doesn't think so. Okay, so we say that we could use it to express uh, sarcasm, like you have this one, Dede, you said the speech was well delivered. The man who said, that's what she said, that means that they all have rising intonation, they are doubtful, both are doubtful. That is what will be the right answer? Both are doubtful. Okay, that is it, because they are all using rising intonation. Okay. Or say, hurry up, we'll be late. And then say, all right, all right, all right. We'll be late. Then the two are polite. So we have established that. The rising intonation could be used in one breath to express doubt or uncertainty. In another breath, it shows you are polite. The falling intonation means that you are certain, but it could also mean that you are not polite, you are impolite. There are other uses of rising and falling intonation. One of which are when we are listening, Okay, you can use either falling or rising, but many times if you are listening, oh, I bought peppers, tomatoes, and then you fall, and onions. Okay, I have books, pens, and pencils. You, you use them together in your assurances. And even when we are counting, somebody can say one, two, three. Others can say one, two, three, four, five, six, and then when they are ending, say seven. And as I said, when they are about starting a news presentation, they could say, good afternoon, and you're welcome to join news at 12, or join midday news. And when they are done with everything, then they'll say, and this is where we bring the curtain down on the midday news. Good afternoon. So, good afternoon, good afternoon. They all have implications. I think that it has been exciting and you have learned a lot. You can still go to our YouTube channels and continue listening, watching, and educating yourself because you are still preparing for the task ahead. And I hope that it will help you to do well. Let's Continue learning, let's continue watching, enjoy learning, and we will become excellent students. My name is Dennis Amuba, as I've always said. I love you to bits and continue learning because joy learning, we keep learning. I love you to bits. Bye for now.
subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.